ways for our program to provide data related to the children and families being served as well as the services being provided. One option is with the PIR. My name is Amy Corkery and this is Belicia Carter. We have with us today one of our training specialists, Cindy Coates. Welcome, Cindy. Well, thank you. Cindy, we're so glad to have you with us today. Can you please share with our audience when and how they should set up a PIR in Child Plus? Of course. The Program Information Report, or PIR, is an annual questionnaire that must be completed by all Head Start and Early Head Start programs. Child Plus makes tracking this data a breeze by duplicating each question in the software and calculating totals using the data tracked throughout the system. To view the PIR questions, calculate data, and monitor with PIR audit reports, users must set up a PIR. We recommend doing this at the beginning of each program turn to allow for monitoring all year long. Waiting to set up a PIR too late may bring unwelcome surprises on your reports. To set up a PIR, click on Management and then select PIR. Go to the bottom on the left sidebar and click Add New PIR. The first thing you will need to do is give your PIR a name. You can see that we all like to keep our names simple and then name them after the program and enrollment year. Underneath the name, you will see three different types of PIR reports, Head Start, Early Head Start, and Migrant. Cindy, selecting the correct option is very important. Wouldn't you agree? Yes, selecting the correct type lets Child Plus know which questions to calculate. Your next few fields are important too. But if you don't have your grant number or delegate ID available at this time, use zeros. Come back and update the report with the correct numbers as soon as you have them. Agencies with a DUNS number can place that here. Cindy, that next field, date last year's PIR was reported, seems to confuse a lot of people. Especially when we tell them that it doesn't have to be the date that the PIR was submitted on HSES. Can you explain this? To make sure we aren't duplicating counts, Child Plus uses this date to determine when to begin counting data for the PIR. This keeps us from counting data for one program term and then again for the next. So what date would you recommend, Cindy? We encourage users to enter the date they stopped collecting data for last year's program term. New staff members, volunteers, medical items entered prior to that date was counted on last year's PIR. Those items that occurred after this date will be included in the current PIR. This only applies to certain PIR questions. You can see which questions are affected by this date here. Thanks for clearing that up. Funding is the next field. Child Plus pulls participants, staff, and volunteers into the PIR based on the funding they're associated with. Click here to select each funding type to include on the PIR being created. What do you recommend for beginning end dates, Belicia? We strongly recommend that the users match their PIR dates with the enrollment dates used in program info. Child Plus counts individuals and services that take place during these dates that means entering the wrong dates can cause you to end up with some errors. We should also remind them that this data cannot span more than 12 months. That's right. For most programs, the public school cutoff date is an easy one. Again, stick to what you used in the program info for the current program term. For those of you with multiple cutoff dates, pick the date that covers the largest amount of participants. Use Report 2003 to help you override question A13 with the correct values. The next field, Date Screening Started for This PIR Year, is specifically related to question C29. The date entered here tells Child Plus the earliest date possible to count screenings. Map to this question. Since our hearing and vision screenings are good for one year, we have our database counting any screenings that took place within the 12 month period leading up to the first day of enrollment year. That concludes the general setup for the PIR. Now we have to begin mapping items created by someone at the agency with terms used in the PIR questionnaire. We'll begin with question A25 and B12 race calculations for participants and staff. 
Hispanic may be in your database, but it is not an option on the PIR. That means you will need to select another option for your participant identifying as Hispanic. Do that by clicking in the dropdown and selecting an option from the PIR. We chose other. We'll explain this in more detail in the general comments tab. Cindy, can you talk to us about questions A26 and B14? All of the language codes you see in the left column were created by someone at your agency. It's very helpful to have the different dialects in the system, but the PIR uses broader categories, so you'll want to select the correct PIR category for each language code that you have listed. On the next question, A19, Head Start programs report the total number of participants that left prior to the end of the program term. And how many of those kids did not return? To ensure that your report only includes participants that left and did not come back, you will need to identify which participants should not count. You will notice a list of drop reasons. Locate the reasons used for participants that made it to the end of the program or the end of the program term. Those are the ones that you want to check. You can see that we checked age out of program and we also checked finished program term. Those codes are only used for individuals that complete the program, so we'll need to exclude them from the calculation. You'll do the same for questions A20, question A21, as well as question A23. Pay attention to A20 and A23. Those PIR questions should include participants that completed the program. You'll notice for each of those, we're only excluding participants that completed the program term and should return next term. The next setup section is for question B1. We want to make sure that all staff members are counted on the PIR. The left column contains a list of employment statuses. You will need to determine which status represents staff and which ones are used to identify contract staff. The next setup item is from section B also. This list includes the different types of volunteers that support your program. To make sure Child Plus counts the correct ones for question B2, place a check next to each description that's used to identify volunteers that are current or former Head Start parents or guardians. Sometimes staff leave us. They may move on or find other opportunities. For questions B16 and B20, you will go through each termination reason and identify which description is used to when someone left for the hire compensation or left because they change fields. In the next two sections, you will have to map terms used to describe the employment and education status for your parents and guardians. The terms available for use at your agency will appear in the left column. Select the appropriate PIR term for each item using options available in the column on the right. We've noticed that most programs using the terms child plus defaults when tracking this information. If that is true for your agency, you won't have to make any changes in these sections. Defaults are already mapped to the correct PIR category. That brings you to the end of the PIR setup here, but we recommend checking your setup for health and education events, as well as health and education requirements. It is an area that has a big impact on how things are counted for several questions in Section C of the PIR. We provide an overview of both areas in our Child Plus Checkup series. You can find that by visiting our YouTube channel. Once you've gone through everything, calculate your PIR by clicking here. Wait for your confirmation and then click on each tab to view the calculations. Cindy, thanks so much for joining us today. It was my pleasure. Be on the lookout for the next CP Smart video.